everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be making these succulents with holographic vinyl in the background. I really, really love this type of thing and working with this holographic vinyl because the results are just so beautiful. Like they have so much depth and color to them. There's a bigger one and then I have a smaller one that's kind of like an opalescent white. And then I have this like yellowish reddish one, which is this vinyl right here. And I'll break all that down in a second. So the stuff that you're going to need for this is you're going to need some kind of mold. I have this silicone succulent mold. I got it at Walmart and it was in the cake baking aisle and it was like $5 really really reasonable so that's what i have here i'll find it online and leave a description or leave a link for it in the description box below so you can find it if you want to work with this but i think that almost any mold will really do you're also going to need scissors you're going to need some cardstock a sharpie marker and you're going to need this vinyl or, or something similar to it and what this stuff even is is i have a cutting machine it's a decal cutting machine and uh, cricut makes cutting machines like it but mine is a silhouette um, i make vinyl decals here is something that i've made with a cutting machine so that's what i have this stuff for originally but it works really well for this type of thing I don't have any green vinyl like this. I couldn't really find any, so that's, which is okay, honestly, because succulents tend to be all kinds of crazy colors. They don't have to just be green. But I'm gonna go ahead and try this stuff out today. And it's the same brand, it's the same thing, it's vinyl, but it's just a holographic green kind of color. So I think that might look kind of cool. One thing that I really love about working with this stuff is that they make really cool looking frosted or matte pieces. Usually with resin, everything tends to look better when it's shiny. And I just feel that these look really amazing without even being glazed. And I will say that they also look cool when they are glazed though. And because of that, at the end of the video, I'm going to use spray paint to glaze some of these pieces. That's usually what I'll use is clear spray paint. I know that people will use like various glazes and some people will even use resin, just another layer of resin on top of it. I just like spray painting because it's quick and it's effective. So stick around for the end of the video if you would like to see that happen. Okay, so the very first thing that we're gonna have to do for this is something I've already done ahead of time. It's gonna be, you're gonna need to make one piece of the from the mold you wanna use. Like these, I already mixed up some resin and colored them and there we go. So we're gonna be using this as a template that we're gonna trace in order to make it to where we can cut down the right sizes of our vinyl. So yeah, that's gonna be step one. Uh, like I said, I already did it, but you're just gonna mix some resin up. You're gonna pour it in there, uh, get your piece, and then there you go. Okay, so for the next part, you can go about this one of two ways. This is a strip of that vinyl that I was showing you oh sorry that I was showing you earlier this is like a bluish kind of like blue to orange shift and then I also have this opalescent like pink blue kind of thing going on and then this is a pink and it's pretty much just like an orange yellow red kind of shift to it so the first way that I'm going to go about it or show you how I go about it is I'm going to use the cardstock first. So this is just a piece of cardstock. You can get a pack of them at Walmart or Amazon or wherever. I'm going to take it. I'm going to start to trace it. So I'm going to take my Sharpie fine point marker and I'm just going to start to trace around it. So now what we have is the traced piece. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out the piece. But when I cut out the piece, I'm gonna make absolute sure that I'm getting inside of this black line. You in fact wanna get like a millimeter or two away from it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna cut that out. Okay. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna stay inside of that line. You don't want any black. 
on your cut piece. Like you want to be far away from that line. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And you want to give yourself lots of room because when we cut the holographic part, you want to make sure it's small enough to go into the mold as opposed to it being like a tough fit or like sitting on top of it. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. This might be a little bit sloppy because I'm on camera and I'm trying to get through it, but um, I have another piece I cut earlier off to the side and we'll compare and see which one came out better. Okay. All right. So as you can see, I stayed very far away from that line. Like I left myself a lot of space. So now what I'm gonna do is, ooh, I'm gonna come in with my mold and I'm gonna try and fit it in. This always throws me for a loop. This might take me a second. Yeah, it took me like a really long time. Uh, so there, there we go. That's how that works. You see how that fits in there well? So here is the piece that I have done it with before. And let me take a million years doing this one too. So there's that one and then the other one. And I do think that this one is a better cut, but like I said, I did it off camera. So that's that. So now we have our template and we can take these and we can go on and trace onto our vinyl, which we will do next. Okay, so I have my vinyl and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a piece off for this. And I think that should be plenty. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my template that I made and I'm gonna set it onto the back of this holographic vinyl piece. And then I'm gonna take my Sharpie again and I'm going to trace around it. So now I'm going to cut around this line and with this, it's not as important that you have to get so far into that line um, because there's already a little bit of space left. You don't have to strive to be so far in it. You could be a little bit more relaxed about that. there you go. And you see that fits in there. So that's good to go. So I'm going to work ahead a little bit off camera. Now that you have the basic idea of how that all went down, I'm going to do that with these. Okay. So I have my other pieces all cut up. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you the second way to go about it. Remember earlier I said that there's two ways to really go about this. One was make the template. The other one is I'm just going to trace directly onto the film sticker hologram stuff itself. And when I do it that way, I want to make sure that the shiny side is facing me because that's what's going to be like, this is the direction it's going to be going into the piece. Like when we have it all cut and all that. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to set it down. And I'm going to take my Sharpie. It needs to be a Sharpie. If it's a pen, I'm pretty sure it will just smear. So fine point Sharpie. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to trace it. Now I have this all situated and I'm going to cut it again. I'm going to do the same thing I did when making the template as I want to go in kind of far. But with this one, I want to go in a little bit farther even more this time. So um, with this type of thing, it probably would be best using an X-Acto knife, but I'm just going to say screw it and go in with scissors. So that's what that looks like. I'm going to try and fit it into the mold. I will most likely have to cut some of it down. 
All right, so I did not have to cut it any further down. I actually did a pretty decent job. Um, any other time I've done that, I've had to do like, go in and cut a little more off and cut a little more off. And how I'll go about that, since I didn't do it this time, I'll show you. Like if I wanted to trim that part down a little bit more, I would just go in with the Sharpie pen like that. And cut it down more. So that's what I would do if it didn't fit in there as well as it did. So that's the second way to go about that. Here in a few, I'm going to mix up the resin and pour it into the mold. But first, I want to talk about the pricing of this stuff because I didn't really cover it earlier on. Um, and it actually works out pretty well because something kind of weird happened. I got this one at Michael's and it was, I want to say like $11 and some change. Um, I was at Walmart earlier though and in the craft section they now carry this kind of vinyl and this one was like $5 and some change. It was almost half off and I don't understand why there was such a significant price drop between these two things. I'm trying to figure it out and I figured maybe it's shorter um, and it's really not. They're both 12 inches by 48 inches. So I'm not 100% on what's going on with that. They didn't have this color, they only had this color, but they also had a sampler. You can get a three pack sampler and it's about $14 at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and places like that, but at Walmart it was like 10. So I don't know what's up with that. I'm gonna open this up and kind of check out the quality of it and I'll let you know how that goes. This is the stuff from Michaels and this is the stuff from Walmart. They're pretty much identical. I don't know why this one is significantly less, but if you want to pick some of this stuff up, may I suggest going to Walmart instead of Michaels or Hobby Lobby. I went ahead and mixed up some resin and got it all ready to pour into the molds. If you have any questions about mixing and measuring resin and all of that, I have a tutorial called Resin Basics for Beginners. Go ahead and check that out and it'll get you up to speed. I'm using SuperSap CCR for this project and it's what I use for most things because I love it. If you're curious about that resin, I also have a tutorial about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my resin and I'm also going to take a toothpick and it's going to help me work the resin into these little corners so there's not bubbles. So I'm going to start to drop it in. And there's two ways to go about this as well and I'm going to show you both. For one way we're going to drop in the resin and then we're going to put the pieces direct the uh, holographic vinyl pieces directly on top of it. And then in another one I've already poured a layer of resin that's been in there for a while and we're just going to put a thin layer on there and then squeeze the vinyl into it. So that's what's going on right here. I'm just going to pour this. With these, you don't want to fill it up all the way. You want to leave a little bit of room because we're going to put in the vinyl piece and then we're going to add another background, uh, another layer to seal it all up. And it can either be clear or it can be colored. And I'm going to do the holographic green one, this one right here, I'm going to leave that with a clear background. But with the other ones, I'm going to use a mica powder to create a colored background. So don't fill it up all the way. Leave some room for both the sticker and one more layer behind it. All right, so I'm going to fill, finish filling this one. I'm going to fill the other one and then I'm going to get ready for the next step. So I'll see you in a little bit. Actually, no, I'm going to wait so you can see me fill this one. My bad. All right, so with the one that already has resin filled and cured into it, I'm just going to spread some around. It doesn't have to be too much, but I want to get a layer spread onto there. All right, so now it's time to put the vinyl cutouts into the resin. I usually wait until it thickens up a little bit more. This epoxy resin tends to be really runny, but I think it should be okay just doing it right away. So I'm gonna give it a shot, and if it wasn't okay, then we know that it wasn't okay. So I'm gonna take my piece. I already took the backing off of it. Like here's the backing part, cause like I said, it's a sticker and I'm gonna Stick it into here.
That's the piece where we just put the thin layer of the resin on. So I'm going to take a stick and I'm just going to squish it up in there. You do want to try to avoid getting any air bubbles in it, even if you do, it's not really the end of the world. Alright, so there's that one. The reason I'm not wearing gloves while doing this is because I think this stuff is just going to stick to it all crazy. You should definitely always wear gloves when working with chemicals and resin and all of that. But yeah, I just, I didn't want to fight with it in the video with all of them sticking to me all ridiculous. All right, and now for the last one. Okay, so now I'm gonna let these sit until the resin is much, much, much thicker. And then I'm gonna go in with the second layer, which will be the last, or well, I guess the third layer in this situation, whatever. It'll be the last uh, round of layers before we can pop them out of the mold. So I'll see you in a few hours. The resin in these cavities has hardened up enough to where we can go ahead and pour our last layer in. So I worked ahead a little bit and mixed up some more resin. I have some clear resin right here that's going to go into this. And I colored the other ones. I have a like a pink, red, blue kind of mica shift, which is really pretty. I have an ice blue mica, which is also very pretty. And I have this teal peacock color, which I really, really love. And these are just micas. Micas mix into resins very easy. This is that peacock color right here. It's called Peacock, and it's from Mad Micas, which is a soap making company. I'll leave the link for that in the description box below. And then the other colors I got from TKB Trading, and they're really, really cheap. These were probably like a couple of bucks each. And that blue is blue ice, and that purplish color is a pink, red, blue mica. Okay, so first I'm going to start off with just the clear resin, and I'm going to pour it into my green succulent. Now I'm gonna move on to my ice blue. And I'm gonna put the ice blue in this opalescent colored. This is that like white, pink, blue, shifting hollow film. So I'm gonna put the ice blue as the background in that. Now I'm gonna move on to my purple. And I'm going to put it in this little one right here. Alright, and now lastly, my peacock blue. Now I'm going to leave these overnight. We're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to pop them out of the mold, check them out, see how they came out. And after that, I am going to glaze the pieces with spray paint. So I will see you tomorrow. So it's the next day and it's time to take them out of the mold. And I'm very excited about that. I have no idea what this one's going to look like. I know what these are going to look like because I've already made some. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm going to start with that one because I've been curious since yesterday. That's all right. It's not bad. It's not as cool as I thought it was going to be. I'll try glazing it and see how that works. With the clear background, I don't think I like it as much. I think it does look better with a colored background, but like I said, we'll see how that looks when I glaze it. All right. So now we'll start with this small one. So oh, that's what that looks like. It's that opalescent color, that white color like the first one I showed you in the beginning of the video. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to do the big one. Super pretty. Okay, now we're going to do the smallest one. Cool. 
So I took the ones that I made ahead of time and showed you at the beginning of the video and I glazed them with spray paint. I'm gonna do that with these other ones in the next shot, but I wanted to take the ones that I've already done and kind of just show you the difference. This is what it looks like when it's just frosted and this is what it looks like after it's been glazed. They both look cool, just in different ways. So here's the glazed one, here's the frosted one, here's the glazed one, here's the frosted one. So now, if you're not interested in seeing me glaze these with spray paint, I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. If you would like to see me do that, then I'm going to set up in the garage and I will see you in the next scene. Okay, so I'm all set up in my garage. I've put my pieces onto a piece of canvas. You could probably use cardboard or paper. I have just chosen to go with a piece of canvas and I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel and I'm just gonna spray it right on there. Cool. And now I'm just going to leave them to dry on there for a while and then, oh, then I can make magnets with them or whatever. And uh, I guess that's that. So I appreciate you watching this video. I know it was a long one, but there was a lot of information to cram into there. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing and all those things that go with YouTube. I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.